Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. We've got two teams here looking to find a way to win. It's the Cowboys coming in at 2-7, and seven, going up against the Ravens, who come in at 9-0. and oh. So, for the call of this Week 11 matchup, let's hand it over to our commentary team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Lone Star State and Mammoth AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Today, we've got an interesting Week 11 matchup on tap between the Baltimore Ravens and the Dallas Cowboys. Hello again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon, joined as always by Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at this Cowboy team entering play. Now, losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, they've been the talk of the NFL so far. Nine wins in their first nine games. And some people subscribe to the theory that a loss might not be the worst thing for them. They've had it easy all year long. How would they do handling adversity? Fights off another. I think the second tackler would have learned from the first. So here are the Cowboys now ready to go on offense for the first time. They'll be led out by the former Heisman Trophy winner and number one overall pick from Oklahoma. It's Sam Bradford. And Sam Bradford, he has touch and accuracy, and he has it in bushels. This guy is amazing. If you watch him throw seven on seven or watch him throw routes versus air, the ball hardly ever hits the ground. He's absolutely a receiver's dream when going out for a pass. Here's the first carry for LaShawn McCoy. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Then here's a look at the starting offense. So second and nine, the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here. Second down, Bradford looking and finding Allen Hearns. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down. Now a play fake here on first down. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Dante Hightower. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure it out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you. And you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest ones maybe bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. The starters now defensively for Baltimore. Glover Quinn entered the league as a cornerback, but has evolved into one of the best free safeties in the NFL. What's left? What's left? Now the Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third down. Could be a blitzer. To throw is Bradford. And he's got the hookup with Anthony Fasano. They needed 15, they got 15, and a good mark to boot. It's first down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. First down, Bradford. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Okay, when the big guy runs a corner route, you're asking a lot, no matter who's covered him, no matter whether it's a linebacker or a defensive back. He usually has the advantage because of his body type. Blue 
They go back to the ground with McCoy. And he'll be dropped at the 23 after a pickup of about four. Tackle made that time by Brandon Graham. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Second down, it's McCoy. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. After watching that play and result, I go back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator, Brandon, before the game, and said, how are you going to move the ball running it against the number one defense? He gave us no indication, didn't tip his hand at all, so we have to see how this unfolds as this game moves along. Give him eight yards on the play, and they pick up the first. We heard them talk before the game about utilizing the intermediate passing game this week. It works for them there. They move the chains. And we saw them work on it in practice as well. And most teams take a period at a time to work on different things. They put a couple of periods of work into the intermediate passing game. And now we know exactly why. They got the look that they were seeking, and they were able to take advantage of it. Bradford. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. And some room to maneuver. There he goes, right side. He's at the 40. The 20. And it's a huge return as he brings this all the way back down to the 15-yard line. Well, they thought they were going to break the tie. The defense had other plans. They were already in field goal range. But boom, an interception. I don't know if this was a case of being a little bit too greedy with the opportunity to put points on the board. But give credit to the guys on the defensive side. Hung in there, battled, and made a key play. This will be caught just inside the 10. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. It's a gain of 6 on the play, and it'll make it a second down. So an even first quarter on the scoreboard, but the threat of points on the horizon. Nothing, nothing, our score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. This presentation of the NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Snickers. You're off your game when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Second quarter now. Brandon God and Charles Davis with you. It's the Ravens who have the football. They've got it second and four to start things out. They'll try a handoff right with Gurley. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. Newton looking to throw on third and one. A bullet throw, but incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there, and that'll bring up a fourth down. 
On third and one, I think everyone in the stadium thought they'd try and run the football there, but they tried to surprise the defense and hit something through the air. Instead, it results in an incompletion. So fourth down coming up, John Harbaugh send on the field goal unit. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And the Ravens strike first at threes in. So after the pick, they can't capitalize for six, but they do get three. And I know in this situation, most of us want to focus on the offense. You know what side of the ball I played on. Let's give that defense a lot of credit. Taking it over in a sudden change situation and shutting them down. Scoby now to kick it away after the made field goal. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Cowboys' offense heads back onto the field. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football, and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play <laughs> guy a question. Hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. Now a second down throw for Bradford. They'll set up the screen to McCoy. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. So nothing there on the screen that time. That means all that great acting they tried on offense went for naught, didn't it? Because you have to try and influence them. Make them think that you're doing something else. Make them think that they can get to the passer by letting them by and then setting up the screen and getting downfield. Didn't happen at all. Give a lot of credit to the defense for not tumbling to that one. And this is going to be incomplete. The intended receiver was Corey Brown. And it's fourth down. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. On fourth down, here's the veteran Shane Leckler to punt it away. That's taken on the 25. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Ravens offense now. They get ready to head back on the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this rank, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And Salak here, left side. A gain of six there on first. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. So the offense readies for a second and four. Here's Newton now on second down. Finding time. And he finds his target, Terrence Williams. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And he will find his man on the outside. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. 
But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Second down now after the pass completion. Again, Newton. Right side complete. That's Woods. And he takes it down to the 10 yard line. 19 yards on the pickup there. And now they'll have it first and goal. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Larry Ridley. Larry will have highlights and analysis of this first half. I'm guessing mostly defensive highlights that we will see. Yeah, that's kind of cool. No touchdown scored yet so far. Yeah, none whatsoever. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Now a first down throw for Newton. And this is caught. Touchdown, Baltimore. Todd Gurley, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Ravens will add on to their lead. They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing going three wide is a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. Now Josh Scobie to attempt the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10-zip. Following the touchdown, Josh Scobie now will kick it away. It's a short kick, taking it to 15. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. And the Ravens defense, they get ready, and they trot back out onto the field. They were able to force the three and out last time, led to the punt, and then led to a touchdown for their crew. So they'll be looking for a little bit more of that, Charles. Well, I think that they created the spark with the three and out. Gave a little momentum to their offense. They said, all right, appreciate it, guys. And they took the ball downfield and stuck it in the end zone. And the defense go, wasn't out there long. Up. They'll be trying Check to keep it short here. Run. Bradford on first down. Man open left side is Brown. And he'll be out of bounds up near midfield at the 49. 15 yards there on the catch and run. down and 10 now for the offensive group. On first and 10, Bradford surveying the field. Looking for Hearns and it's intercepted. Picked off by Dante Hightower. And they have possession and they have it at the 38-yard line. And he may want to track down that football because that's interception number one on his career. You're saying that's going into the trophy case? I'd put it there. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's when you ask the equipment guys to make sure they hold it for you after the game. But if you play in the back seven on defense, that's part of your job, finding ways to take the ball away from the other team. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. 
Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. We'll I love see, it. We'll see if they dial it up this drive. So the offense has it first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he won't go down, and he's brought down. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. In scouting parlance, if you really like a player, they, they ask if you're going to pound the table for him. Well, when Todd Gurley came out of Georgia, I stood on a table and did backflips. Even with the knee injury he suffered his last year there, I thought he was one of the best runners I'd seen coming to the game since Adrian Peterson. A gain of six there on first. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. He hit his first, this one from 38. And Scobie's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. So they get the three, increase their lead to close out the half. Excellent way to end a drive. Go into the locker room with a little bit of extra momentum after adding three to their total. Scobie now, kick it away after the made field goal. That's fielded in the end zone. And this will be a touchback. Last year would have come out to the 20. This year they'll move it out to the 25-yard line. Time running short here. They'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front as we send you over to our headquarters in Orlando where we check in with Larry Ridley for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Cowboys' struggles from a week ago have carried over to today's game. The Ravens are keeping them off balance, and that's pushed them in front. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Cowboys on their opening drive. Here the defense will come up with a pick. Quinn's reading the play and comes away with it, ending the drive. Ravens lined up at the 10. Here the pass would be completed into coverage. And this five-play drive goes for a touchdown, pushing the lead to 10. They take it at the 33-yard line. The quick pass and completion is made. He would pick up 11 yards and then duck out of bounds. Cowboys wind up throwing a pick on the drive. That'll do it from here in Orlando. Let's get you back out to Dallas as we hand things over to Brandon Godden. Fielded about a yard deep. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. 
Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out-leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Five yards left for the offense. It's second down. To throw on second down is Newton. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Now third down, less than a yard. The one running back is Gurley. Newton looking to throw on third and one. And he's got his man on the out route. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Back to throw, Newton. And bringing it in, this is Selleck over the middle. And he's brought down, but not before getting across midfield to the 45. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Give him 16 on the pickup. And it'll give the Ravens a first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected. But that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Ten yards still left on second down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. And on third down, the Cowboys bring it an extra defensive back. Throwing on third down, Newton. He'll throw underneath for Gurley. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. On first and goal, Gurley. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. 
so nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it's the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. On second down, here's Newton. Got a man, it's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Brent Selleck, his second touchdown on the season. And the Ravens will extend their lead. And he's a reliable target. He's more than that, though. Hey, look, I'm not going to say he's the best tight end in the league, but he's solid. Yeah, because he's able to block. And that's almost a lost art for a number of the tight ends in the league now because the most popular guys are almost what we call move tight ends, more like receivers. But those guys who can do it all, there's still a place for them in the NFL. And they'll get set here looking for the two-point conversion. Cam looking to throw. And they don't get it. They tried for the two-point conversion there, but unsuccessful. Tough there. Good pass. Hit the hands. He just couldn't bring it in. And every receiver's coach everywhere seeing that play. Focus, focus, focus. Watch it all the way in and tuck it away. And following the touchdown, Josh Scobie now will kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he'd taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. The Cowboys offense now, they head out for their first possession of the second half. They'll come out in the pistol. They're down in this game, a chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many time. plays do you script coming out of the second most of, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Again, it's McCoy. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Telvin Smith that time there to make the play. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Cowboys in possession of the football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Still nine yards to go on third down. On third down, Bradford caught on the right side by Adams. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trait in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. First down, Bradford. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Bradford. Over the middle, that's caught by Adams. And a nice gain of 21 yards. 
one thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. So here we go, first and ten now. First down throw for Bradford. He's got time. Look at the time. Going to drop this off to McCoy. Complete. It's a gain of five. And it's a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play. But if you're on offense, be aware. A ball may come your way. Here we go now. Green, 90. Green, 90. They'll throw again. Bradford. And Fasano here brings it in. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Fresh set of downs here. Again, we'll see the pistol here. On first and ten, Bradford backing up. All kinds of time. And he'll check this one down to McCoy. No gain, and it's second down. Well, the stats that matter on this play don't help a team very much, unless, of course, you're playing defense. If you're getting points per reception, you got a reception, but yeah. no yardage. Great job by the defense, though. They, they read through that one. They read through it, gave up no yardage, and people got credit for tackles. Pretty good deal. One receiver right, that's Brown. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Encroachment, defense. Still second down. So second and medium, second and five now. One man in the backfield, that's McCoy. Throwing, Bradford. The left side throw complete to Adams. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. And the hitch route has run really well. That jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space. All you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. Now a first down carry here for McCoy. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Brandon, that play typifies what we've seen from the offense all day long. They've had no success getting things going. I think for the offensive coordinator, he's got to go to that side of the play sheet that says try something different, try some specials, something they haven't seen all day to try and get this offense kick-started. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Now a second down throw for Bradford. It's caught right side of turns. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. So third and two, and I count six defensive backs out there. Bradford to throw it, and he's got it to Hearns. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Working out of the gun, Bradford. He's got time. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Allen Bailey in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. False start offense. Well, 
Ooh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. On play action, Bradford. His throw incomplete. Josh Huff, the intended target. Third down here. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. Can't find anyone open. He dropped it. Couldn't hang on in the end zone. So no six points incomplete. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big time drop. Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little early. False start, offense. And maybe a final chance to get on the scoreboard here. This is fourth and goal. Desperation time. Bradford on fourth down. And he's going to go down. Back at the 27-yard line, he's sacked. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They have the big cushion here in the final stages of this one. I don't know if there's any better feeling than being up big on the road. There really can't be, because for a team to go on the road and win in the NFL, that's huge to begin with. But just think about all the preparation that went into it. When they first started talking about this game, leading up to it during the week, going on the road, unfamiliar city, obviously, unfamiliar hotel, no one's going to be with you once you get to the stadium. They're all going to be against you. You name it, all those things they had to deal with, they were able to conquer them and do it convincingly. Yeah, they did it very convincingly, and now the final moments of this one. And bringing it in, this is Selleck over the middle. It's a solid pickup of 11, and it's second down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. Well, on that play, the expression, don't blink, you might miss something, certainly applied. That was fast. Defense diagnosed the play, and it was over in a heartbeat. So now a third and 12 with an extra defender here in the secondary, a nickel look. Now Gurley. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. Call it a gain of four, and it'll bring up fourth down. And the storyline of this one, Charles, no doubt the number zero. Zilch, nada. A shutout so hard to do in the NFL. It really is, and what an accomplishment, because you feel that not just on the defensive side, but as a full team, there's a lot of pride that goes into shutting out an opponent. And how about that zero on the scoreboard for them going along with those zeros in the time column, too? So for Baltimore, they keep on rolling 10-0 now to start the year. And they'll return home next week to take on the Cincinnati Bengals. Meanwhile, for the Cowboys... Add another loss to the pile as they drop to two and eight now on the year. And they'll have a quick turnaround as they're back in action Thursday afternoon at around 3.30 Eastern for the traditional Thanksgiving Day game in Dallas. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. So long, everybody.
Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. The Ravens have had a great season and want to find a way to continue that by picking up win number 11 on the year. It's the Bengals going up against the Ravens. With that, let's hand it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. They've got the call of this week 12 matchup. Larry, we are coming to you from the heart of Baltimore, nestled between Russell Street and I-395. We're at M&T Bank Stadium. Today, it's week 12 of the NFL season, and we've got a good one in store between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, you look at this Raven team as they get ready here. The beat goes on, doesn't it? A perfect 10-0 to start the campaign. And it's a good locker room to be in, too. Guys don't show up on game day hoping to win. They expect to win. And so far, they've yet to have a letdown. Meanwhile, for the Bengals here, they're hitting their stride of late. Winners of three of their last four. And last week's win was indicative of how good this team can be. It was a complete performance. This one fielded at the five. Then he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. 
Here come the Bengals now to take over. They'll be led out by the former Mississippi State product, the mobile quarterback, Dak Prescott. Giovanni Bernard across the 30 to the 31 yard line. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And the Buffet Boys, the O line. Hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. Second down following the run. Again, here's Bernard. Oh, nice spin. Oh, that brought back bad memories. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. And here are the Raven defensive starters. Marcel Darius, year in and year out, plays at a Pro Bowl level. Playing this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. Let's go. Third and short yardage, Prescott. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Trent Cole, he's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. Quarterback was hit. Dustin Colquitt on to punt for KC. He's got a dad, a brother, and an uncle that have all punted in the NFL. for the offense to start. On first down, Newton to the right side, caught by Salah. And he's able to get this across the 10 before being taken down. They were ready for what the defense was showing. They had prepared for that look, recognized it, went straight to the air, got the first. Well done. Love the recognition because you can prepare for everything. You can watch the tape and put together your game plan, but you still have to understand what they're doing in terms of what they're showing and be able to adjust accordingly, and they did exactly that. Finding time. Still back there. He sets to fire deep. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. He was looking for Terrence Williams that time. That'll bring up second down. They decide to air it out a little bit on that play, take a shot downfield, but the coverage was really nice. Able to get a hand in and tip it away. Back to the air, Newton on second down. Dumps it off to Gurley. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and they're going to have a third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Short of the sticks after that completion, and now it's third down for this offense. Newton throwing again. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, 
turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. Now the first carry here for Todd Gurley. And not much, maybe a yard up to the 29. Tamba Ali there to bring him down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Here's Newton now on second down. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. and 10, Newton. Quick hitter here, it's complete. So oftentimes you see defensive holding here, it's offensive holding for the flag. They go play action here on first down. Airing it out deep for Woods. That's caught inside the 20. They're all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Robert Woods, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Ravens have taken the early lead. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play, and just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well, because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. And the Ravens lead at 7-0. So this drive spans seven plays, and it's capped off by the Baltimore score. And following the touchdown, Josh Scobie now will kick it away. This is taken at his four. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Now a play fake here on first down. Blitz coming and down he goes. They overload him that time with a safety blitz and he winds up being dropped for a loss of seven. How about that one? The so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. now on second down oh he got position on him and he pulls it in one quarter down seven nothing is our score ea sports nfl sunday returns following this
The NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Head & Shoulders. Shoulders were made for greatness, not dandruff. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, and it's the Bengals with a football to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Past him and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. They'll get 16 yards there and it'll give the Bengals a first down. Whenever we meet with coaches and they always talk about wanting to establish running the football, it's oftentimes with a good tight end who can control the line of scrimmage and the point of attack and they're becoming harder to find because the colleges are giving us a whole lot of receiving tight ends, former wide receivers who can run, not necessarily block very well. In this case, though, we saw two tight ends on the field, both go. of them with the ability to block, and he ran the ball successfully behind that power set. Now Prescott, it is caught by Royal. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Just one yard to go here on second down. Here we go. Play fake. Here's Prescott. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Telvin Smith in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. On third down, it's Prescott. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Here's Dustin Colquitt now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Getting set to go again here, Cam Newton marches back onto the field. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot. Maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. For that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. To throw on second down is Newton. And he'll lay out and pull it in. What a diving catch there. That one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks. When you're a player of his stature, you don't just circle the games on your team's calendar. You circle, circle the Pro Bowl. <laughs> Without a doubt, that's a game that you just figure you're going to be in each and every year. That's because of catches like that. That's why he goes. First down, it's Gurley. Stays on his feet. He'll get about four as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. Corey Graham brings him down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them 
can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. And the two-minute warning lurking. This will probably be the last play before we hit it. Yeah, they want to get themselves in position to score in this last shot before the clock hits. Newton now to throw. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. A minute 58 to go in this first half of play. We're back to Baltimore after this. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Larry Ridley is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. Third and five, so they bring in an extra defensive back. Expecting pass. From the gun on third down, Newton dumps it off to Gurley. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. On first and ten, Newton. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but... That's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Second and ten. Newton again. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Throwing on third down, Newton. And it's caught by Salah. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. And that's caught left side. It's Woods. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Now it's Gurley. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. It's an 8-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. Smart approach there, using the run to pick up the first. And that was a defensive setup they prepared for this week, knowing that keeping it on the ground was the best way to attack it. And that means also that they're able to read them pretty well. All the things they prepared for when they get to the line of scrimmage, they see it in pre-snap recognition and know exactly how to attack based on their planning and preparation. To throw is Newton. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. So we're at halftime here in the Inner Harbor with the hometown Ravens on top. As we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando, where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Both teams have done enough to be leading here to this point, but in a close game, you know the second half is going to have some more twists and turns, which should lead to some excitement. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Ravens on offense, first quarter winding down. Woods is the target on the sideline throw, and he caps off the six-play drive with the score. First and 10, Watkins is going to get to the quarterback here. This one ends up as a loss of six.
Sticking with the same drive. Smith's going to get the quarterback here. This ends up as a loss of nine. Okay, Larry, back here, 7-0 our score as we ready ourselves for this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. And his throw's going to be incomplete. The veteran Brent Selleck, the one he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. Oh, man. For him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And, yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. to the air. Newton on second down. But he finds his target, Terrence Williams. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. Defense comes to the line now, first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. On second down, here's Newton. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. Completed pass on second down. Now it's third down as the defense looks for the stop. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. That really was a nice play by the defense, but my question is, why was the offense trying to go wide on third and short? I would have figured they'd just try and wedge a hole in the middle and try and pick up the first down. So fourth down coming up, John Harbaugh send on the field goal unit. From the right hash, this from 48. And Scobie's kick is good. And the lead moves to 10-zip. So a good kick there, and they wrap up the drive by putting three on the board. And you know, let's face it, you're not always going to come away with six. Defense in the NFL are just too good. But you've got to come away with something. And there, they get three. Scobie now to kick it away after the made field goal. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Let's see what our player spotlight feature has in store with Dak Prescott. And he has not really been able to have a lot of comfort back there in the pocket. Pressure's been coming at him a lot, hasn't it? 
And they've got to figure out how to tamp down that pressure. How do they decrease it? Is it getting rid of the football quicker? You know, shorter drops? Maybe they do something different with their pass blocking and their protection schemes. Maybe you meet them on the line of scrimmage instead of retreating to try and protect your quarterback. They've got to figure something out, though, because you cannot let your guy get hit that much, not if you intend to win. Now, I know they'd like to erase that video and those four sacks that they've seen so far. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe you keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. Rush coming, and he's taken down. They overload him that time with a safety blitz, and he winds up being dropped for a loss of seven. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Third and long for Prescott. Serve it. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. Face mask penalty, and Charles, you were a defender. You know sometimes in the heat of the moment, it's hard to keep your hands away from that face mask. Sometimes you just get out of position as a defender when you're trying to make a tackle, so you end up flailing away, and your hand gets into the wrong spot. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Takes this to the 27, give him four yards. Well, so far, this game has gone the way the defense coordinator had hoped. They've dictated things, and they've not let them run the ball very well at all. They gave up a nice game there. I doubt it'll back off their confidence. They've played so well throughout this entire game. They'll run again with Bernard. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. They control the clock, they control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Prescott from the gun on third. And he's got his man, that's Macklin. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. It's a five receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. A first down throw for Prescott. He has Britt over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Simple slant route, and it works to perfection. And when you're a big-bodied receiver, you use it like it's a basketball play. Body the defender away and catch the football. And the offense lining up first and ten. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. It's the Bengals. They've got the football, but they trail here as we get rolling in quarter number four. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Prescott on first down. He's got time. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Telvin Smith in there to get him, and that's sack number six for him on the year. 
A rookie QB struggling gets thrown down to the ground there, but you know, maybe this game, it's not over yet, but maybe this game can be a learning experience for him. So many different things that he has to pick up on. When to, when to go ahead and flush from the pocket and run. When to get rid of the football, not take the sack. When to just go ahead and go down early and make sure you don't make sure you don't fumble the football. So many things that he has to learn. This game starts the process. A second down throw for Prescott. He's got time in the pocket. Underneath, this is Bernard. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Call it a gain of three. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. We're still in search of the first down after that last completion. So third and 15 and an extra defensive back in the game now. Flooding the passing lanes. Throwing. Prescott. And some space here. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. A gain of 19 in picking up the first. So the offense has it first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Jeremy Macklin, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. I like the boldness, and I like that they took a shot downfield, but it was well covered. He was able to get a hand in and knock it away. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Let's go! Five, nine. Five, nine, nine. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. I can't help it. I'm just sitting back in admiration right now. This defense tells everyone that plays against them, you're not beating us running the football. That's who we are. That's what we're about. It's not going to happen. If you're going to beat us, you better pick another way. On third down, it's Prescott finding time. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? And Gano's kick is right through. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10-3. to all right, so you needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal then maybe not exactly what they wanted, but it's a necessary first step. Still plenty of time remaining, but you could really use a stop defensively after the kickoff, preferably a three and out. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And last year, that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year, he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee. And that's at the 25. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Offense staying ahead of the chains here, second and three. On second down, here's Newton. To the right side, caught by Salah. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving.
getting late here in the fourth, and if this team has any chance to win this football game, their defense obviously needs a stop here. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Now Newton. And Salik here, left side. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Give him nine on the play. And it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. And at this stage of the game, time a factor, time on their side as they just try to eke out the final precious moments of this one. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Time for a break. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. We're back to see what happens after this. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Gurley again here on first down. And now the Bengal defense here calling a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. They come out here in the eye. Newton's going to throw it. And Matt Spath has it. And he works it to the... And now the Bengals are going to call another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Here's Gurley. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Now hang on here, timeout called, timeout called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And again, he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Now Newton. And he finds a man on the crossing round. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And Scobie's kick is good. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. So barring something extraordinary, something crazy here in the closing stages, that field goal should just about put this one on ice. Brandon, this would be a great win for them. The better team's going to win this game, no question about it. Scobie now, kick it away after the made field goal. So a very short kick here. This will be taken by one of the up men. And they'll be set up pretty nicely here as they have it up to the 35-yard line. 
Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They might be thinking this is close to a lost cause here. Got to play it out. What do they need to do? Well, they have a thought process in mind already, but they can't get ahead of themselves. They know that they need to score quickly. Yep, two-score game. Onside kick and get the ball back and then score again, but they can't worry about the last two points. <laughs> the only thing that matters is scoring quickly, then they'll take it from there. Surveying the field. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Trent Cole in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. And they're going to speed things up here. And he clocks it with just over 30 seconds left. Third down and 12. Prescott to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. And he still doesn't have a catch. We're into the second half. I think it's a little bit of a surprise to me, but that was one he should have caught. Absolutely. That was his best opportunity right there. He dropped it. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Desperation time. Prescott on fourth. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that'll be just about all she wrote for this one. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about Slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. The clock cannot be stopped here. Defense can't do anything. So kneel it down, take it home. No doubt about it. It's what you practice for in winning situations each and every week. Victory formation. Take a knee and go on into the locker room and celebrate. Call it a victory. They'll go ahead and take the knee here, and the unbeaten season will continue. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And this one going to wrap up with Cam Newton going down to a knee. Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So for the Ravens, the perfect season remains intact as they move to 11-0 on the year. And they'll have another home date next week as the Miami Dolphins come to town. Meanwhile, for Cincinnati, it's starting to look like it won't be their year as they drop to 5-6. And, and they'll try again next week at home against Philadelphia. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.